<laughs> well, happy days, my fantastic artistic friends to painting with Master Temple. We've got a big canvas. It's already primed. It's already pre-coated in some liquid white. Let's have a nice big painting today. A nice big mountain. We like those. So, let's start off with a one-inch paintbrush, and I'm just going to go into some French Ultramarine. I'm just going to tap that on there. French Ultramarine. And we start up in this top corner. And because we've got liquid white on here, as you know, we can blend colour up on this canvas rather than tone ourselves to death trying to merge all the colours. We can do it quite easy. Of course, the colours won't remain true colours. They'll, they'll blend out into a paler colour, but that's all right. I use Windsor and Newton's paints or Bob Ross paints, depending on depending on what I can get from the range at the time. Okay, I'm going to change the flavour a tiny bit. I'm just going to, just a tiny touch of phthalo blue. A little bit more of a vibrant blue, that one. And we'll come underneath this sky and just wince in another little bit of a, a cloudy. We'll, we'll leave some white spots for some clouds, you see, just there. And we'll just pop that little bit in there, just like that. And then just with less paint on the brush, just merge them all together because we've got that white already on the canvas. We don't need to do much with the sky. We don't need to really tow ourselves to death with it. But just like that. So we've got two different kinds of blues on there already. Okay, I think I'm going to have a tiny, tiny bit of water in this. I don't know where it's going to be. But we'll just, for instance, we'll just put something down down here so this is again a little bit of phthalo blue a little bit of french ultramarine just work that out okay let it blend into nothing at the sides we'll have some land at the sides obviously to hold this water in because we don't want water escaping now maybe we do maybe we do maybe we want to free the water one day Okay, so just like that. Nice and subdued. Okay, and then just take this and just whatever we don't want, we'll just paint over. Okay, that easy. Okay, I'm going to take a big brush, nice and dry. Okay, and I'm just going to try very gently just, just soften all this sky up. I think we'll have a cloud in here. So I'm just going to soften this sky. I love that French ultramarine. It, it really does look more, more like the skies I'm used to. A little bit more, more moodier, shall we say. Okay, just like that. And then across the water as well. Okay. Now, with that big brush anyway, we'll just use that big brush. Just knock off the excess paint. I'm going to tap the end into some titanium white. Now this paint that we're using on the palette, the Windsor and Newton and, and the Bob Ross colours, whatever whatever we've got to hand, is quite firm. Okay. And then I'm just going to tap just where those light spots are. Really tap in a nice big fluffy shape. Don't want a big distracting cloud today so we're gonna have some mountains in this so that's what we'll have okay so really tap it in there probably hear uh, the canvas rattling that's how that's how uh, how hard we're tapping there let me take it off to, to the side there just like that set that brush down okay get another one get a, <laughs> pays dividends if you get a couple of each brush and I'm just going to swirl the base of this. Don't touch that top edge. Don't touch the top edge of your clouds just yet. Just swirl the base. Merge it into the blue. That's underneath. Okay, just like that. And then very lightly just go across, up, swirl. Just swirl. Hardly touch the canvas. Just like that. And then just gently go across there. And then we've got the indication of a really big cloud. So if we want to make that again, go back to the dirty brush. 
reload and then let's put another one let's say about here okay just there like that there we don't have to go we don't have to go berserk okay and then just swirl the base of that cloud and again just fluff the cloud up ever so gently and then all the way across there and then blend into nothing and then that way we've got a couple of nice little clouds floating around nice and freely up in the sky <laughs> watch me put paint on my face now okay so let's paint a distant mountain so for that i'm going to take a tiny bit of this um blue this french ultramarine and a tiny bit of white mix them on the knife mix down here on the palette okay and then let's cut in a tiny little distant mountain uh, you probably can't even see this wherever it is but it's there okay and then give him another peek because they haven't over mixed the paint you're gonna get all these different effects all these different colors coming off your knife and that's that's exactly what I want with this one just there like so really push that in there like that Okay, wipe the paint off the palette knife. Let's grab, let's grab this brush. Let's give it a beat. Okay. And then just swirl out ever so gently the base of that mountain. Just swirl it out, pull it out, blend it into the liquid white that's below. I want this to be a very distant, faint little mountain You've got to look for it to see it because we're going to put some bigger ones right in front of him or her it could be a female mountain not that mountains have gender or so, you know so there we go just tap into a little bit of white we can create a little bit of fog as well down at the base of this big old mountain so it is very nice where where i am today really super duper hot i hope it is where you are so to cool down a little bit i thought we'll paint a nice cool painting okay just like that all right so that's all i'm going to do for that far away mountain i'm going to swirl that brush off when i get the chance okay into odorless paint thinner and then knock it against the leg of an easel and then draw it across a dry clean paper towel there we go right so let's work on a bigger mountain i think we'll have i'll have, we'll have that pictured in the center and then we'll have some big peaks at the side so um let's take some black so get rid of this blue put that to one side we may use that so i'm going to take some black and uh, we'll take some burnt umber and a bit of lizard and crimson and maybe some Thalo blue as well okay so really good dark color we may use this dark color several times throughout the painting okay so i'm going to cut off a little uh, roll of paint now i'm using the small knife today because it gives you a little bit more control um we jiggy jaggy mountains if that makes sense and here we come just down there so very lightly touched what i mean by jiggly jaggly mountains is that you've got a little bit more wiggle to the top of the to, to the top of the mountain rather than a, the big knife gives me that's just my preference by the way there, so we'll, we'll set that down there like so maybe it comes up there and down let's get in there and scrape all the excess paint off like that and then maybe on this one there and, and maybe a, another peak or two there wherever we want these 
peaks on these mountains. That's where they're gonna live. We knew that, didn't we? We knew that. Yeah, like so. There. Really get in there. There, like that. Okay, wipe off the excess. Now back to the brush. We'll use this one inch brush since we've got it going. And just like we did with the far away ones, we're just gonna grab now look at the look at the colours that are already in that. We're just gonna grab try not to touch that top edge that you've created with your palette knife. And pull that down just like that. And again, blend that into nothing. Blend it with the liquid white that's on there into nothing. And of course, when we come back, we'll put some highlights and shadows on these, these big mountains. Okay, this one looks in front of this one. That's just the illusion we can create with just brush strokes, you see. Okay, down here like so. And pull down, really get firm, really get pulling the paint. Blending outwards just like that there like so blend out does doesn't it gives me a bit of an idea bit of an idea okay there okay so move that into nothing on the liquid white once again i'm gonna swirl that off okay now Let's work on some highlights and shadows. I'm gonna take some white. Okay, I'm gonna put that down there, I think, on a clean spot. Okay, I'm gonna tiny bit of the burnt, uh, sorry, the, the raw sienna. Okay, there's a little bit of a brownie tinge to it. Okay. And then I'm just going to very gently cut the littlest, tiniest roll of paint off and really just, just touch on where we want it to be and then just let it flow off nice and gentle. Ever so gently. Whisper light. Whisper light as you're coming down the side of this mountain. Shh, there. A bit more down here. Like that. Maybe our sunlight is in between these two mountains. So we might have sunlight on this side. Okay, before we do, let's highlight a little peak here. Just there like that. Okay, let's go on to this one. So if we start off, load, load it properly down. There we go. If we start off about here and then just gently come down. Gently come down. So yeah, I and ninety nine percent of the time make highlights just coming from from the uh, from the right hand side. That's just easier for me. That's all. Sometimes I put them on the left hand side. Today we've got a little bit of an unusual one because we're doing them from both sides. And that happens in nature sometimes when the sun is right. There we go, down we go. Down we go. That easy with a palette knife. Little tiny palette knife. You can create all kinds of wonderful, amazing effects on here. Just a bit of practice, a bit of desire to create, and away we go. That goes off there. Right, wipe that off. And then let's go into some of this blue colour. Okay, so get some blue, get some white. Nice pale blue, baby pale blue colour. Okay, and then again, once again, don't over mix. Let's come up here. And then just very gently. Hardly touch the canvas. Hardly touch. That we could zip that one off just there again it would be quicker with a big knife don't get me wrong I 
think sometimes you've just got a little bit more control. Down there like that. We'll come back and sort the sharp edge out in a moment. We'll bring that out there, down, down, like that. Maybe there. I don't like that. I don't like what I call sharks tooth mountains. I like to give them a little bit of a a little bit of a personality. A little bit of a cool spot there. Just there like that. Running out of paint. <laughs> and I'm just gently in there as well. Excuse the arm. Just there like that. A little bit in there. And on this one as well. Right, the last hurdle we needed to mix a little tiny bit of paint up, but that's all right. And down. Bring that across there. Just gently, like so. Okay. Mix up a little bit more paint because I've run out. So it's phthalo blue. Uh, French ultramarine and white. This might be a little bit different flavour. Maybe we've got a different shadow there. A bit more on this one, different colour. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Looks <laughs> exciting, yeah? Exciting. into that one there a little bit more okay wipe that knife off and let's go back to our highlight colors a bit more white in that and there we go and then we can play with these highlight colors so we can fetch that in there and push that little mountain back Back to this one, maybe this one comes up down like that, and then all the way down there, like so. Big mountain today, big, big mountain. Yeah, we weren't kidding, were we, folks? We was not kidding, right? Before we carry on, before we carry on, let's get a brush, any brush, we'll just use this one. I'm going to go into some white paint and I'm just going to put some white down here and tap and just create too slow. Let's get the big one. The big one that we use the clouds with. Just tap the base of these mountains just like that. Go up the side. I want to diffuse the colour, change it a little bit. Gently go up, gently go up there, like that, up the side of the mountain. And the same on that one. We're gonna, I think we'll put snow, a uh, tiny bit of snow down here. So to do that, grab the palette knife, make sure it's nice and dry. I'm gonna use the small edge first, the small edge of the knife, and I'm just gonna sneak in here. And I'm just gonna try and push and I'm using the small edge because I don't want to distort the mountain too much. Okay, just come in there. Once you get out of that little tricky spot, let's put some... Find a clean place to wipe the knife. Just put some snow in there, just really scrub in. A bit of snow. Of course, this will, it's like a little valley, isn't it? It's like highlighted in a way by the, by the sun. Maybe it creeps up the side of this mountain a little bit. Up 
there like that. And that's really thick paint on there. There, like that, and maybe a bit more down there. Where is it going? I don't know. We're going to have to stop at some point, Danny. We're going to have to stop or we'll end up with a white canvas again. This glacier is getting pretty big. Push it in, push it into the fabric. There, like that. Maybe a tiny bit of that shadow colour as well on this side of it. Just there, like that. Maybe down here as well. Okay, wipe the palette knife off. Back to some white paint on the big old brush and I'm just going to tap this a little bit we'll, we'll have some distant trees I think just here so I want to create a, a little bit of mist and fog between those two planes and then just blend that out okay just there like so okay let's wash this brush big old brush so Again into some odorless paint dinner. There we go. Just put that down. Excuse me a moment. Dropped, dropped me other paintbrush earlier. Okay, so uh, I think if we have, I think if we have some sort of little tiny trees way back in the distance. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of thin oil and we're gonna go. Mm, Let's say into some blue, let's get some blue and some of that dark colour, a little bit of crimson as well in that. So that background shadowy colour that we made for the mountains, we'll add a little bit more crimson and blue to that. So we've got a nice deep dark purpley colour. Okay, now I'm just going to touch on here, just here like that, and then side to side like so and we've created a tiny little little tree and we'll add another one there and this is a lovely color I, I like this color a lot it's a very dark purpley color and I find this little paint brush as an artist you'll you you get used to the brushes that you, you paint with and you'll have favourites. Now this is a watercolour brush and it was very, very cheap as well. So I'm not even saying it's a quality paintbrush either. But it, it tends to work really well from it. Now, maybe maybe you guys have got <laughs> different opinions. Does it work well for me or not? But I like it. I like it. It creates all these kind of little effects just all back here just like that and maybe a bit more over here uh, you hear the birds singing you can hear the birds singing okay so let's load up a bit more paint let's put another one there that's got a bit of a crook in him that's paint, <laughs> bit of a crooked tree. I could send him to Westminster, you know, bit of job there. And down we go again. Okay, I'm gonna get bigger as I get to the sides. Okay, so we're gonna have bigger trees as we get to the sides. Even the bird shouting. I do like to hear the, uh, the little birds, but not at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> there we go. Maybe another one up this side as well. Now this is going to be quite repetitive for the next couple of minutes, but uh, we'll keep going. Just like that. Let me know, folks, anyway, what do you guys want to see painted? What do you want me to paint next? I've got some ideas and, and some people have been sending me some things. I just uh, I just need the time to, to sit down 
and plan out how we're going to do it because there's some absolutely epic epic images epic photographs that, that kind people have are sending me and I really want to do them justice I don't want to just paint anything okay now we're getting somewhere let's put some filler trees in the background there like that okay now what we can do as we're getting away from the uh, the focal point of the painting we can just start adding all kinds of little shapes with the same brush so all, all we need to do is just put down where we want to start and then just really tap in where we want a, a little as little tree shape to be okay and then maybe another one there as well running out of paint again a bit more paint thinner well it's actually oil i'm using on this one i, I want it to gleam i want it to shine there just down we go like that okay we're getting somewhere folks let's change the flavor a little bit i'm gonna add some green into that Maybe we're going to have a big one there. And by changing the flavour, we've added an, another little bit of a an entity, should we say. A little bit more variant of colour. Okay. More paint down at the bottom because we want it to be darker down here. And we do up there. Uh, let's, we might as well just fill up this whole side. Now you could do this with a fan brush, you could do it with a one inch paintbrush as well, you could even do it with a two inch paintbrush as well. You can do that quite easy and maybe one day we'll show you how to do that. But now I like to show you this little tiny favourite brush of mine. There we go, down we go, down we go. Just fill that side up, darken it all off. There, like that. Okay, so I might as well do the other side, haven't we? Since that were going quite well. So again, so we'll come up there, a little bit of a tap, and then work your way side to side, just with a tip. And then as we get further down the tree, more and more pressure. That's all you need. Load a bit more paint into that one. Again. Get your centre line and then more and more, more and more pressure and more and more paint. There we go. Let me put something in there. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Right. So set that brush down. Take the palette knife. Okay. And let's get a little bit of burnt sienna on there and then just intermittently put some tree trunks in there. Sharpen the tops of some of these up as well. And in between the trees as well, you can just push uh, a few tree trunks in there, just like that. Give the indication that there's lots of far away trees in that little, little wooded area there. Yeah, a bit more there couple on this side straight up there, like that yeah just there and there like that okay just like so let me take a step back right so we're gonna have some land in here somewhere like so so let's put some reflections in so I'll take some of that dark color that we've made the trees with and then just on the one inch brush just very lightly pull straight down very lightly straight down straight as you can get it remember still water always lays quite flat okay a bit more paint on that just like that straight down now what you can do 
is get rid of most of your paint off that paint which you can go upside down on one or two of these just on one or two there just like that or the whole painting if you wish just on one or two so I'm going instead of pushing downwards with a paintbrush I'm pushing upwards sneaky eh sneaky Go down there like that. Let's paint on the brush now. And then get back to the brush which uh, we're, we're creating those reflections with. Straight down again. Very gently, very gently. And then lightly go across. Just ever so lightly go across. Just there like that. Okay. All right, not too bad, eh? Not too bad. So let's put some mud in there. So let's hold those trees up. See, I've got the big knife now. Okay, so I've got burnt sienna and raw umber. Okay, so let's put a little bit of mud to hold this lot up. So really get in there. Just like we put the snow down for the glacier. Just really get in there and push some of this mud up there like that. And again, make it wider as it comes towards us and narrower as it goes away from us. Perspective. Perspective. There. A bit more just there. Okay. Maybe we'll close this in there i think but for now let's work on this okay so again let's get us a one inch brush and i want to just take a couple of strokes of that mud down just like that not much not much very gently very lightly just neaten off that base same on this side knock off the excess go across give the watery appearance and we can do that because we've got the liquid clear underneath. There, like that. There, like so. Okay, before we carry on, I'm going to just dive into this black paint, this darker paint. I'm going to put some, we'll captivate all this pond in. So I'll just tap that in there like that. So yeah, like that, I think. And then same on the other side there like so yeah we'll come back and highlight all this lot anyway yeah we will okay let's put some highlights on that mud okay so mounting color i'm gonna add a tiny bit of that shadow color as well bit of white lighten it all up so it's slightly different from the mountain highlight not much, not much. Maybe a touch of crimson in there as well, just to just to warm it up a little bit, give it a little bit of a pinky glow. Okay, little knife this time, tiniest roll of paint, and then just very gently over the top of some of this. Don't cover it all up. Don't cover all the darkness up, and then just work on the shape. Work on the shape of your bank. There, like that. And just very similar to how we were putting mud, uh, sorry, you know, highlights and shadows on the mountain. That's exactly how we're doing it this time. But we're going only small strokes, very lightly, very gently. It's just small strokes. Just like that. There we go. Wipe the palette knife off. Okay, whoop, drop the palette knife. <laughs> getting a bit getting a bit excited there, Dan. Getting a bit excited. Okay, so let's get some liquid white. I'm gonna mix it with some of that titanium white. So I've got liquid white and titanium white. A lot of it as well by the looks of it. Okay, let's 
cut in our water line. So just start about there and then work his way along. Just work his way along. Okay. Reload the knife if need be. This could actually be a snow on the on the water as well, you know, a bit of ice. Does look cool, doesn't it? Cut in all the way around, all the way down there. <laughs> a couple of ripples out here as well. Same on the other side, get rid of that mucky colour now. A bit more. On this side, just there and just there. Keep your knife flat though, you've got to keep your knife parallel to the base of the canvas. Once you'll end up, <laughs> end up with, with water that's, it'll just bother your eye. It's like we've just said, still water always lays flat. Okay, maybe there's a, a big ripple or two or lump of snow out here. Just like that as well. Okay, let's work on this foreground now. I think we've, we've about done the background and the, the middle ground. So let's work on this foreground. So I'm going to take the rounded brush and I'm going to go into some yellow. Why not have yellow? But to that, we'll add a bit of blue as well. So yellow and blue and maybe a bit of sap green. Let's see what we get. Tap the brush. Okay, and then let's come up here. And let's create all kinds of nice little foliage effects. Maybe the leaning over a little bit like that. Yeah, just like so. And a bit more up here as well. Don't kill all the dark area though. Start killing all that dark area, we'll just be left with a green canvas. We don't want that either. Sneak that in there as well. Change the flavour a little bit of these grasses. Okay, same on this side. So I'll go above your shadow, go above your dark area. And a bit more of that. Down there like that. That looks like a nice little place to put a, a little shrub. So I'll just load the brush up and just touch on that. Like that. Out. Picked up a bit of white off the waterline, but it looks like little white flowers. That's what Bob Ross would call an happy accident. <laughs> you could say we meant we meant to do it. We meant to do it. There we go. A little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna break some of this line up in the background. I think it's, a, it's annoying me. Okay, so a little bit of greenery, just on a little tiny fan brush. Again, don't go mental with this. You don't have to paint Wimbledon Common. Just, a, just a couple of, just a couple of green hints here and there, there and here. Just like spring has started, I suppose. Well, it is April after all. Well, it's April when I'm making this video. I don't know when it'll come out. Probably will do. Probably will. There we go. I think that, I think that is about it. Turn your fan brush to the side and create some larger grasses just like that. And again there, like that. Maybe one or two there as well, facing inwards. Yeah, I think I think that's not not an half bad effort in half an hour or so, whatever it's whatever it's taken us. Okay, so let's grab the script liner brush. Let's go into some red paint, and we'll sign this one. So if you have liked this painting, my fantastic friends, give it a big thumbs up, won't you? Um, and leave me a nice comment. Let me know how we've gone on. I'm just going to sign this one there just there and if you're not subscribed to the channel consider subscribing because i do appreciate it every single one of you that subscribes 
But let me know how we get on. Let me know how you get on as well. Send me a photograph. And until next time, take care of yourself. Stay safe. And as always, have a sin and happy day. <laughs>